Hello, in this PlayStation Classic BleemSync hack video, I'm going to show you how to hack your PlayStation Classic using BleemSync using 0 0.4 or you know any 0 0.4 version. So I'll be using 0 0.4.1 because that's the latest, but you can use 0 0.4.0 or a newer version as well. This is the new recommended version. It has it's a lot stabler. There are other cool features such as automatic metadata scraping. So you don't have to go through all that hassle if you ever did it, you know, in version three, I mean, 0 0.3, where you had to actually, you know, manually get a from, I mean, cover art, you manually had to make sure the files were named a such way, manually set up the configuration file. You'd have to do that. I'm just gonna show you how to automatically do it. So this, it is fantastic. So first of all, you want to make sure you have a USB stick. I recommend USB 2.0. I've had compatibility issues with USB 3.0. A lot of people have, you know, or not a lot of people have read some people say online that USB, their USB 3.0 devices work, but for maximum compatibility, use USB 2.0. And what you want to do to that USB stick is format it. So if you open up this, so disks and then go to your USB stick and da -da -da -da. and you might you, you may have noticed why doesn't your mind saying 3.0 like is this a USB 3.0 stick this particular one is I'm just going to demonstrate it using a USB 3.0 stick on here because I've already got quite a lot of files on the one that's already set up but the process is exactly the same I'll just be you know upfront with you if you saw if you noticed the 3.0 that is the reason but the process is the same okay so you want to go here you're going to click the gear icon click format and make sure your volume name is set to Sony all uppercase that is very important you make sure this is off click for use with all systems and devices so the fat version click next format it it shouldn't take long at all it's no longer uh, is it still on the desktop okay i need to mount it now it's being mounted i don't know what that one is saying so let's see okay so that's just ejected it it was just a problem the desktop didn't get updated so i'm just going to plug it back in so it will appear now so there we go okay so that is weird why it keeps showing the old one as well and that's what it is i had the wrong part you know selected okay so so what you want to do is just you know delete this partition delete that other partition and now you just want to click create partition and now you want to click gb that is fine click next and put a volume name sony all uppercase oh i've typed it too many times use with fat okay click create to so make sure you just got one partition there we go click the play button and that will mount it so we got an empty drive now okay so just to show you again if you only have one partition you want to click the gear icon format partition type in sony make sure everything else is set the way it is on mine format your format it it won't mount it you've got to mount it manually and there we go okay so we're all good to actually go and install the bleem sync software we can do that by going to our web browser and if we just search for bleem sync in google I will actually provide a link to the GitHub page as well, just to assist you with this. And now you want to go to the release section, go to the latest version, go to Linux, click that, you'll download the file, which I've already done. So if we go to my downloads directory, I've already got this version right here. So we'll get rid of this other version. This is an old version now. Why well, don't have the recycle bin there? I'll just delete it like this, move to rubbish bin. And now we want to extract it. So we can just right click it, click extract here, and that will extract it. And is it done? yep that is all done now. so that's extracted once this is extracted you want to put all of this onto your usb stick 
I'd recommend working locally first, then copying the contents of this folder to your USB stick every time. Just because I've had some issues with Linux where the software doesn't quite work on the USB in terms of you, what's it called, you know, setting it. It, it, the, the, the little application you have to run. I've had a little issue with that, so I recommend just doing it locally, then copying the contents over. But I'll show you that. Now, what you want to do is go to games. I'm going to show you how to add a game. So, every time you add a new game, you've got to increment this by one. So, if you have two games, which is what it currently is, there's just empty files in there. If you add another one, you create a folder called three, then four, five, six, you get the picture. In each one, you have a folder called game data. Then, here is where all your game data goes. You can ignore all of this. All you need to do is get rid of all of these files. Ignore the lick as well. And, uh, rubbish bins right here. And now we just need to remove the game.ini file. Leave the pcsx.cfg file, the config file. And now if we go to the Crash Bandicoot folder, copy this over. Okay, so that's all copied now. So this, you know, it doesn't actually matter what it, you know, what it's named. Before, you actually had to name it the correct identifier, which I think for Crash Bandicoot, the USA version is SCUS-94900. For both files, you have to make sure you did that. You have to manually put a, you know, a cover art image and manually configure the game INI file, which we've removed. But now all you have to do is go to bleem sync and there you just want to you know just run this bleem sync so if we open up terminal and if we cd to this directory which just changes directory so if we just drag and drop this on click enter now go to bleem sync and we just want to run that bleem sync file so if we do dot four slash bleem sync okay so permission denied Let's try sudo, and it's asking for my password. Even though you can't see any password there, even with asterisks, it's still typing it. Same command, not found. I think it's the permission denied part. If we right click this, go to properties, go to permissions, go to execute, say allow executing file as program. This is the issue I've had. Sometimes when it's on the USB stick, it doesn't let me select it. So just do it locally. Now if I go back to this first command, ah, there we go. It's running it, it's saying game.ini doesn't exist. Grab it from Bleem Sync Central. It's found the serial number, that's actually embedded in the disk itself. And it says, you might be thinking, you know, why is it added some sort of Tony Hawk's game, you know, to, to the database. And that is just because if we go to games, to this, you know, sort of empty content, if we go to the game.ini file, file, that's what you know this empty template is but as you can see these files you know aren't of any significant file size so that game won't work but the crash bandicoot one if we go back as you can see we've got a png file now fatal reading error a bit stupid let me just open it with let's just open it with try something else okay there you go you can see that it's got the correct crash bandicoot cover art and if we go to the game i and i you can see it's got the title successfully, the correct publisher, the year it was you know, published, the number of players, which is one, and the disks, which is just the file, you know, the bin file. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You just repeat the steps. You add a new folder here, you know, one, two, three, four, you get the picture. Then inside, you create a folder called game data. Inside of there, you put your queue, and bin files they have to be q and bin at the moment maybe in the future there might you might be able to use an iso or a eboot for example and then you just copy and paste this pcsx.cfg file from one of the other you know game folders that's already there this just has to be the default one then you go to bleemsync you do the steps that i showed you to run Bleem sync in the terminal just make sure you change the permissions i've had that issue before once you're all done with that and you have to do this every single time you make any change to the game folder so if you add any new game for example once you've done this you want to select all of these files so select it you want to copy it 
open up your USB stick, paste it here, and it will start you know, pasting all of these files. So I'm gonna switch over to the PlayStation Classic now, where I'm gonna show you the remaining part of the process of actually running this on the PlayStation Classic. I'll see you there. Okay, so what you wanna do is with the PlayStation Classic, make sure it's all you know plugged in, you got a controller plugged into slot one, the power lead, you got the HDMI, everything plugged in. Honestly, did these are the official steps to get Bleem Sync working. I've tried it where you know when the console is in a slightly different state, and I found it does work. But I'm just going to show you the recommended steps. So what you want to do is unplug the power cable, and now you want to get your USB stick. Make sure it is USB 2.0 because I have a USB 3.0 here that I tried. I tried a couple of a of other 3.0 sticks they did not work i read online some people have got some usb 3.0 sticks to work but i would highly recommend 2.0 just because the compatibility seemed to be better okay so with the usb 2.0 stick you want to put it in the controller to port because it is literally just a usb port so let me it's a little awkward with one hand Hopefully I don't break the stick. That's the PSTV light that's just turned on. And now you want to plug the power back in. Okay, so now that the power is plugged back in, wait for the original light to turn back on. Now the, it's, it's sort of, you know, not the nicest on this phone. Actually, you can see the orange light. A lot better now. Okay, so with the orange light on, you want to click the power button, and if he flashes green and orange a few times, that's when you know the hack is successful. And what you'll get is this Sony Interactive Entertainment. You'll actually abruptly stop and go to something else. Now you will get your Bleem Sync hacked menu. And on here will be all your games. So we've got Crash Bandicoot. This Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 isn't an actual game. It's just basically an empty bin queue folder with a, you know, this image on there. It's just to show you the format of copying your games over. But this one is a legit one, as I showed you on the, you know, the first part of the tutorial on the computer. If I click X on here, now this will load. And save states work. You can gain to the secret menu. You can change the frame rate. You can change the region. You can, you know, do all of that stuff. You can add scan lines if you really want to as well. So let me just get it up to the point where we're actually playing it. And then I will end this little part here. Okay, so we got Crash Bandicoot. So, um, so, as you can see, the controller is connected to PlayStation Classic, cl no, Classic, Classic, click X, and it goes onto the menu, Insanity Beach, can't wait for Crash Team Racing coming out on PlayStation 4, and, you know, all the other systems as well. Let me just show you working, X and square okay so that's it for setting up bleem sync on your playstation classic if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and i will assist you through the process and as usual thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next awesome hacky video